Have you read about this strange situation in India? No. What's happening? There's this guy who started a mass protest against English oppression. He seems to have lots of followers. Well, good luck to him. What's this gentleman's name? He has a tricky name. Wait, Mo... Mohan something. No, I can't remember, but the last name is easy. Gandhi. This is Toledo's personal library. There are others in the house, but this one is pretty impressive all by itself. Most of these books would be described as peculiar by ordinary people. Occultism, mysticism, various types of theology, plus a whole series of subjects you wouldn't expect to find here. I never properly looked at this book. Maybe I should start now, but without letting Toletta know. A huge elephant tusk. Sad, but true. Poor elephant. They look so cute. I've never liked these kinds of things. What could their purpose be? Sure, it's a valuable piece of ivory, but I think it looked way better on the poor elephant. A huge elephant. Toletta once told me what this was for. If I'm correct, this is an apparatus for lampmancy, the art of divination through interpreting the movement of fire and shadows. The art of escapism. It seems interesting, but I'd better not touch Toletta's book without her permission. I've seen how much she cares about them. Ah, yes. Toletta smokes. Lucky woman. I really can't manage to. Actually, I don't think I've seen any ashtrays that look like they've been used, at least recently. Maybe that's a new trend? Decorative ashtrays? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm sure I would be aware of any new trends. That's out of the question. I would never miss something like this. There should maybe be a table here for the ashtray to be set on, instead of on the couch. A Saracenia! Well, I should have expected to find a carnivorous plant in Toledo's house. There are eight different species in the Saraceniaceae family. And they're all pretty common in North America, strange as that might sound. They have unmistakable leaves with their tubular shape. I have to say it's not too bad. On the contrary, it's nice. And it can help solve an insect problem. The more I think about it, the more it seems a smart choice. Considering they're also perennial plants, I think I should get some for my house too. Haile Selassie has just been crowned Emperor of Ethiopia. I didn't know you were interested in international politics, Charlie. No, no. I was just thinking about how I would look with a crown. Hmm. Should I be sleeping already? The art of escapism. How to unlock padlocks, locks, traps, etc. What a strange book. Ah, what do we have here? Thank you, my photographic memory. Here's the police file on this case. Let's see. The police think the thieves could try to sell the stolen goods. They're keeping all the receivers in the area under surveillance. Along with the venues selling contraband products, 
like alcohol. Hey, Joseph's Club, the proud peacock, is included on the list. It's where I usually spend my evenings. Maybe I should have a little chat with Joseph. I'll warn him about the police surveillance, of course. Then maybe I'll be able to gather some information. After all, we've been friends for many years, and he always knows what's happening in this town. Criminals and the underworld don't keep any secrets from him. It's the hook used to keep the skylight closed. The woman who left these tracks stopped in front of this amphora. I wonder why. Is it special in any way? Maybe I could ask Professor Archer for help, or Toletta, perhaps. After all, her family donated most of these items. Notice it the other evening when I arrived at the museum. With a van this size, it would have been easy to drive away with the stolen goods unnoticed. Oh, finally, a little bit of luck. The license plate is clearly readable. It's a TNT van from the telephone company. They're actually working to connect this area of the city to the phone network. Okay. Now I have a lead. And using these tools, it should be easy to eliminate any tracks left by tires. It would be enough to just scrub the terrain with them. Do you remember the password to access the Proud Peacock? That's strange. You've been going to that place every week for years, and still you don't remember the password for the entrance? You know I have problems remembering certain things. Names, dates, places, people. In my defense, I can say that the Proud Peacock password changes periodically, so it's not so strange that I don't remember it. Okay, okay. I don't want to push you on this. Not too much, at least. Unfortunately, I don't know the password. I'd try looking at the bottom of a bottle. Maybe that's where you lost it. <laughs> You're very funny, Charles. I wasn't trying to be. Do you remember that envelope the other night? The one that just had Service Society written on it? Sure. Why? Out of curiosity, I sent Gregory to check at the local Chamber of Commerce. There was information about a registered company with that name. And? So we discovered that an entire file was missing from the Chamber of Commerce archives. A file with certificates of incorporation from 1907. Maybe this is a coincidence, but Gregory has assured me that losing these documents is almost impossible. Your friend Gregory would be surprised to learn what you can lose nowadays. Anyway, he isn't entirely wrong. Those are official files, and that means they're supposed to be preserved with the utmost care. So to recap, I wouldn't have sent Gregory to check out the Chamber of Commerce if I hadn't received that strange letter. And then we discover that some of a company's certificates of incorporation from 1907 have mysteriously vanished. Do you think it's all connected? Do you think I'm being paranoid? Honestly? If I were you, I'd keep searching. This business sounds a little fishy. Maybe this time you'll find something really interesting. But you're the one making decisions, so it's up to you.
so the police are keeping an eye on the proud peacock, among others. Interesting. Um, given the situation, we shouldn't be there, right? If the police find you there... Don't worry, Gregory, I'll be careful. But giving up Joseph's potential help at a time like this would be crazy. Besides, my uncle knows perfectly well that I'm used to going there, so there should be no problems. Hmm. Very solemn. I really don't like objects like this one. You always get the feeling they're looking at you. See? Even when I move, it keeps watching me. An empty stare, accusatory in its passivity. You can look at me as long as you want. You'll never find anything compromising. After all, I have nothing to hide. Very solemn. This must be one of Professor Archer's many bookcases. They all look like important books. There's no dust. They must be opened frequently, or they get cleaned on a regular basis. I've never understood why some people have this obsession for hoarding books. With some notable exceptions, once read, a book is read. Why keep it? Isn't it better to share it? That's why I prefer public libraries to private collections. Anyway, that's just my opinion. This must be... Good morning again, Professor. What can you tell me about the amphora in the picture you gave me? The one with the triangular base. Do you remember? Yes, sure. I remember that object. A valuable Greek amphora from the 17th century. A peculiar object indeed. It was said to be cursed. Did you know? Cursed? Bringer of bad luck and adversity. <laughs> Those are just rumors, of course. I don't want to waste time on such foolishness. It was donated by the Thredomachus family in 1907. I'm sure of this because that was the year I started working at the museum. 1907. That's the year when the Thredomachuses, Teletus family, created the commercial alliance with my father. And it's also the year of that big stock market crash. We were among the few who benefited from it. Is everything all right, Mr. Chamber? Um, yes, of course, Professor Archer. Thank you for your help. I'm glad they started playing baseball games at night. There's a ton more atmosphere. Although, don't many players complain about the fact that the floodlights make it more difficult to see the ball during the game? That's right. But objectively, it's way more entertaining. And after all, let's not forget that's what baseball is. Entertainment. Good point. The butler went to call Toletta. He said to wait here until she arrives and not to touch anything. <sighs> Let's have a look. The art of escapism. It seems interesting. Frankly, bah. It fits perfectly. Hey, but it actually has a purpose then. Pierre Perignon. Now I remember. That's the password to get into the proud peacock. Look at this. I never would have guessed that Toledo liked dolls. People's personalities can sometimes hide unexpected traits. I have to remember that. But that doll looks kind of strange. I think it actually resembles me. No doubt about it. The hat is unmistakable. Plus, it has my proud and refined look. 
I wouldn't expect Taletta to miss me so much that she'd order a doll that looked like me. But there's something strange. What are those pins for? It doesn't look too pleasant. And what's with this shiver down my spine now? Wait a minute. If I'm right, she once told me about something new she was into. It was something that started with a V. Look at this! Let's see. It's a series of old press clippings. Wait a minute! They're all about my family and the accident I had when I was a boy. The one that killed my parents. Why does Toletta have these? That's strange. From what these newspapers say, they brought me to this house, to the Thratamachus place, even before bringing me to the hospital. I wasn't aware of that. Rummaging through other people's belongings isn't a nice thing to do, Charlie. <gasps> oh, yes, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want to sound impolite. I was just looking around. Don't worry, Charlie, I'm just teasing you. So, what can I do for you? Why did you collect all these press clippings? Are you gathering information on me? I think it's pretty normal to gather some information about your boyfriend, don't you agree? It's sort of a family album. Don't you do the same thing with me? I think I already know everything I need. You'll tell me about the missing pieces when you want to. Please do as you wish. I'm guessing that you have something else to tell me, though, Charlie. Am I correct? You should answer some questions about a peculiar Greek amphora with a triangular base that's kept at the museum. A Greek amphora? And why should I know anything about it? Mainly because it was donated to the museum by your family. And since it was the real objective of the thieves... Charlie, please listen to me. There are some things that would be better to stay hidden. I know it's hard to accept this, but please, trust me. I'm sorry, but I don't think so. It's obvious that something's going on, and now I want to find out what it is. You're right. You deserve an explanation. I just know that, among the stolen archaeological finds, there's a particular object, an amphora to be exact, that is really important to my family. Oh! I know that you don't believe in certain kinds of folklore, so to speak. That's why I was unwilling to bring up this subject before. We Thradamachuses, however, place a certain stock in legends and mysteries. Well, that amphora is called Kairos, and it is a very special object. Why is it so special? Based on the results of our research, the Kairos is much more than a simple amphora. That object is a receptacle, a container capable of channeling misfortune from the surrounding environment, amplifying it, and then indiscriminately pouring it out to things and people. Ah. You might not believe it, but we think that object is a great danger. We need to recover it, whatever it takes. Come on, Taletta. I don't want to disrespect your beliefs, but don't you think you're exaggerating? Cursed objects. Misfortune. This sounds ridiculous. Absolutely not, Charlie. I'm accustomed to giving everything the correct weight. 
You were the one who said that the Amphora was probably the real target of the theft. Or am I wrong? Evidently, my family and I aren't the only ones who consider that object really important. That certainly seems to be the case. Frankly, this story still seems pretty fishy, though. I'm sorry, Charlie. I put you in a dangerous situation. If you think I can help you, or if you need anything from me, please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs>